Well, hi there. Today's weather discussion is a timely topic on our active wildfire season and joining us as an expert in the field of fire weather, uh, Neil Leroux, an assistant professor in meteorology in the physics department at the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, well, thanks, Neil. Good seeing you. Uh, we appreciate you joining us on what has been an extremely active uh, week and a half of weather across the region. Uh, what is your assessment of how things have evolved uh, this fire season? Yeah, well, I think that the first thing is you saying a week and a half just now I feel like it's been two, three months, but really it's amazing the amount of activity we've packed into that week and a half and the, the number of acres burned. And I think the, the thing that really stands out to me is kind of having so much simultaneous fire on the landscape, so many large complexes burning at once, producing tremendous amounts of smoke. And unfortunately also the proximity of, of all of those fires to urban centers, thus exposing a huge fraction of the California population to the, you know, to the negative health impacts of, of all the smoke. And uh, obviously that's on top of the immediate uh, life-threatening impacts of the fire itself. Yeah, and really, you know, this, this event uh, started off by essentially two consecutive night and mornings of, of uh, multiple lightning strikes, hundreds of thousands of lightning strikes um, that were really centered initially right over the Bay Area and then more into the North Bay and interior Northern California the following day. Um, so we had this, this mass number of fires start up, as you mentioned, larger fires near very populated areas. I think what took a lot of people maybe initially by surprise was uh, how large, relatively speaking, the ash was falling from the sky. People living many miles away from the fire were seeing some pretty large uh, pieces of ash falling from the sky. Yeah, yeah, I think um, that really stood out to me as well. And I think it speaks to the intensity of the fires and also kind of the nature of, of these fires. Whereas sometimes when we get big acreage, we have a single active front of a fire that's been burning for many days. But with these lightning complexes, you have many simultaneous smaller fires merging into one and lots and lots of active fire perimeter, putting lots of material up into the atmosphere. So I think even on top of the acreage, just the nature of these fires um, are burning very intensely. They're burning in dry fuels, producing very strong updrafts and uh, thus lofting a ton of this debris into the sky. And, and it's raining down, as you said, uh, really over large distances from, from the fire. And, and it's quite notable in that respect. Yeah, so it is a bit of a function of fire intensity, the stronger the, the updrafts or the vertical winds that can transport and carry those types of uh, materials farther away from the, the fire itself, is you, you were saying is sort of a function of how intense or how large that uh, updraft associated with that uh, column plume is. Yeah, you know, we were even seeing some observations that had uh, soil particles in them. And, uh, you know, that really speaks to these strong winds that can be generated by the, the fire itself, strong inflow winds into the updrafts, and then potentially extremely strong updrafts that are lofting all this material uh, in, into the sky. And certainly we saw some of these really intense nocturnal fire events, like in the CZU lightning complex, where we had somewhat unexpected, although when you really look into the data, these things do happen in the coast mountains at night, but nevertheless, very, very strong, very active uh, wildfire behavior at night. So as a lot of people woke up Monday or Tuesday to a lot of ash on their cars, uh, interesting variants in both size and type, uh, you kind of initiated this very interesting project, I thought, on social media was asking for folks to uh, try to submit or categorize and quantify how much ash they received using uh, grid paper and maybe a ruler. What, what brought around that idea? Yeah, well, I think this is an idea that's been kicking around for a little little while. We use a lot of weather radars to kind of peer inside of these plumes and understand what's going on inside of the wildfire environment. And it's a kind of topic of active research. There's a lot of uncertainty about what those radars are actually seeing in there. Whereas in a thunderstorm, we generally understand kind of the size and shape of rain and hail droplets that the, the radars are observing. So at those wildfire plumes, we really have no idea what's in there. And so um, kind of one of the unfortunate outgrowths of being so close to population centers is that this amazing opportunity to crowdsource that data, the ash is raining down on, on everybody. And so, like you said, if we can um, get high resolution photographs with something for scale, we can then use image processing tools to go in and look at the size and the shape distribution of all of those ash particles. And then we can go back and look at the radar data and really understand what the radar is seeing there. And that, that has some important consequences for things like spot fires that can be linked to the larger debris falling out of the plume that may still be burning 
and potentially initiating those new fires, you know, one, two miles sometimes out in front of the fire front and potentially, you know, a very hazardous situation. So really kind of incredible opportunity. It really took off. Um, we've collected over 100 uh, high quality photos at this point. And uh, it was just a very impromptu thing, but a, a unique opportunity. And hopefully it will lead to a real advance in our understanding here. Okay, so as uh, this event, um, is, uh, the containments are starting to improve somewhat, um, but, but just given how active this fire season has been, we know in the long range forecast, unfortunately, though it's typical this time of year, we're going to have high pressure building in again. Uh, the assessment now, leaving August, heading into September and uh, through mid-October, typically our stretch run of the driest weather ahead of our offshore wind events. Um, what is your assessment of our fire weather outlook given how things have gone here for the last few weeks. Yeah, you know, I think in a lot of ways, I'll kind of just stick to the climatology here. Fall is a difficult time in California. You know, the, the fuels reach their, their driest point. Um, even outside of anomalous conditions, we have extremely dry fuels that can carry fire um, in, in very rapid progression in, in the fall. Um, like you said, you know, we're, we're looking out, we have more heat in the forecast that's gonna exacerbate that issue draw more of the moisture out of the fuels. And then the big wild card is when we get those stronger offshore wind events and when we get our first significant rainfall events of the year. And of course, we don't really have a great ability to predict uh, looking out in the long range when those are gonna be. Single events can be really important, both in terms of the wind and potential rain. Uh, so it's always a bit of a wild card moving into the fall, but uh, you know, it seems like year after year now, we've found ways to outdo ourselves one year after the next. And, you know, we're, we're often running uh, in spectacular and devastating fashion so far. If there's one potential silver lining, we've burned a huge amount of terrain already. That terrain's not gonna burn again uh, in, in, in most instances. And uh, some of that terrain is, is in proximity to, to high population density. And so uh, perhaps we'll have a little bit of a buffer there, but it still leaves a lot of the, the foothills of the Sierra and still huge swaths of the coast ranges that uh, could see significant fire activity moving into the fall. All right, Neil Laroa uh, with uh, University of Nevada, Reno, Associate Professor of Meteorology in the Physics Department. Uh, thanks so much for taking time talking to us about uh, the state of our fire weather here in California. And I have a feeling we'll be talking a little bit more as we approach fall. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Take care.